I'm the goon crew! <laughs> My face is cold. <laughs> what do I Woosa, woosa, woosa. Alright. Fuck. <laughs> Smoke in my eyes, dude. What's up, gamers? It's Goon Crew. Happy New Year's. Welcome to my chest rig breakdown. Um, boys are getting lit tonight. We're just vibing around the fire. Just figure it's a good time to record a video. Um, this will be my third time trying to record this video. First two times were scuffed as fuck. Sir B roll here. Oh, hey! Goon Crew, new video. Um, so hopefully the third time is the charm. Um, so we'll just get right into it. Um, I know a couple of you wanted a chest rig breakdown for the boys. So I don't know when the boys are uploading theirs, but we're gonna do mine tonight. So to start off, B's combat system, um, S4 chassis. It's basically a bigger version of the Thing 2 from Spirit of Systems. You got a couple more molly rows over here with the, with the columns being a bit longer. Um, the main difference I would say is you got space to put two extra pouches on the side if you decide to do the main pockets like the GP pouches and the JSTA pouches. Um, these are first spear pouches. They're just single row, um, one column, three rows. I'm saying that backwards, but you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, it's pretty good. Um, you'll see in Flevin's video, he's got a thing too, and I know he probably wants to upgrade to this just to have a little bit more real estate on it. Um, thing two is designed to be more used with backpacks and just, you know, like the recce setup, but I haven't had any trouble using this with a backpack personally, so I just rock with it. But let's get into it. Um, so start off the way you mount this bad boy is if you can see inside right here you'll have this velcro hook and loop flap and it basically hooks into the inside of your placard and you put your placard on basically the base like the uh like the thing two does so there's no real difference there um it's a neat little way to do it though i will admit i haven't had any problems with it never come loose or uh gotten weird on me um, but it just hooks in on the back right there, and then you got your, your little Velcro flap if you want to run a dangler or something or a hand warmer. <clears throat> so from there, Spirit of Systems, uh, Mark V placard. I used to run a Mark IV, but shh, god damn it, we're trying to record a video over here. I'll get right into the guts of it. Got a Spirit of Systems Mark V placard. Um, the inside of it, it's got the 556 placard from Spiritus. Most of my stuff on this setup is Spiritus, Bees, and First Spear. That's pretty much everything you see currently right here. Um, got three P mags, 30 rounders. That's just what I like to run. Uh, I'll break, break down into it later on in the video, but I can store another mag here in a pistol mag, as well as back mount some additional space for mags if I need to. Um, but yeah, not much to say about the Spirit of Mark V. It's pretty solid, um, but it's companion pouch. Got a lot to say about this bad boy. Um, really spacious pouch, and this is the CCS pouch. It's specifically made for this placard um, so it's a double pocket GP pouch essentially it's got velcro on the front and the back uh, in the first pocket and then it's just a you know regular admin pocket up front uh, you got your hook up here for patches admin shit you can add like little candy pouches or chem lights what have you um, but all I run in here currently is a silky pocket boy um, this chest rig is mainly set up for survival, um, I would say survival and then combat. I like to do a lot of bushcraft 
and camping stuff. So I run this most of the time when I'm, you know, going out camping and doing stuff like that. So you'll see a lot of oddball stuff in here that you wouldn't normally see from some other people's videos. And this is just what I like to keep in there. Um, it works for me and I probably won't change it. So from there, Silky Boy for cutting. Um, I usually run an ax if I don't have that on me, but that's usually dedicated to this kit. Um, from there, I've got a canvas sack pouch. And there's not really a specific reason to run this other than it's just another piece of storage kit. You know, if I need to gather like tindal or wood or, you know, collect stuff basically, that's what that's for. It's waterproof, it's lightweight enough that I can just keep it in a pouch and not have to worry about it. Um, so, there it is. Um, currently, I don't have any batteries mounted here, but I would have batteries mounted here. And you'll see later on, I've got way more batteries. I just need to refill this. But it's the Spirit of Systems, I think it's the Chemlite pouch. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it can hold Chemlites, CR123s, or I believe AA batteries. Um, but that's all I have in here right now. Usually this pocket's just dedicated for whatever I need for the day. These live in there usually. Um, but if I need like spare mags or like pistol mags or you know, like a box of nine mil or something, I'll just throw them in this front pocket because these pockets are really what's dedicated on this setup. This one's more of just a general pocket. Um, but up front, got a right in the rain. As Flavin would tell you, um, fuck you if you don't carry one of these. You need it, so carry it. Um, paint marker. I like to run a blue paint marker. I use it to co-witness or uh, witness mark all my gear, like all my irons or my optics, just like all my screws or whatever. It's just good to have on you and you can you know, use it to mark your hits on targets and whatnot. Battery charger for your phone, gear, nods, you know, whatever the fuck. This one can usually charge my phone for I want to say what, like two or three times before it's dead. It's carbon fiber body, and I believe it's a night core, um, but it's pretty solid. Two right in the rain, uh, waterproof pens. I don't really use these. I usually end up using this paint marker, to be honest, um, but it's just good to have backups. And that's all that's currently in these front pockets. Like I said, this is more of a general pocket for me. It's kind of just whatever the, the mission calls for that I, that I put in these. Um, I'll throw these out too. One of these isn't loaded because we ended up shooting yesterday and I just haven't had a chance to reload. Um, so from there, gonna have the Beast Combat Systems double stitch pistol magazine pouch. Um, it's very similar to the AXL Node or the Sphere of Systems pistol pouches. Um, for my pistol breakdown. Um, there's not much to say about them. You can fit multi-tools, you know, like lock picking sets, pens, or pistol mags in here. I just kind of like to have a pocket to stick stuff. I usually end up keeping a Streamlight handheld flashlight in here most of the time, and if not, I'm running a pistol magazine there. It's just kind of a dead space for me to just stick something. And then on this side, I'm gonna have a tourniquet holder and I believe it's the Spirit of Systems pouch. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head what this is called, um, but I know it's multi-use. I believe you can stick like Garmin or uh, some radios in here, but I mainly run a tourniquet in here. Um, like I've said multiple times, I usually keep a handful of tourniquets on me on my multiple layers of kit, so that's not my only one. And then from there, I have this, I don't know how to explain it. Basically, in the sun, this charges like a chem light, and at night it glows. So it's basically like an infinite glow stick. Um, I can't remember the proper term for it right now. We'll probably put some B-roll in there, tell you exactly what it is. Basically, you shine a light on this bad boy and it's gonna glow all night. And if I need to cover it up or, uh, you know, keep my position secure basically. I can wrap it up with electrical tape or something. Um, but that's just there 
so I can see it. <clears throat> Working back to this side, I've got paracord. Um, you'll hear me harp on this a lot because um, it is a survival kit at the end of the day for me before a combat kit. I like to keep cordage on me. I like to do a lot of camping, bushcraft stuff, like I've said. So cordage matters to me. So I keep about 100 to 200 feet of 550 paracord on me at all times. And you'll see later on, I've got some more stuff in here to kind of um, partner with this to make it more efficient. Um, but that's my general rule. Keep at least 200 feet of paracord on you because you never know what's gonna happen. So from there, we'll work it back down. Spirit of Systems, Jasta Pouch. Um, this will run me like 80 bucks on their website. It's a little pricey, but for what you're paying for, you get your use out of if you're really using it. It's a double stitch or a double pocketed pouch. So you can see in there, you got two different um, spots to store stuff. And then we've got a third spot right here. Right now, I currently have an AXL half zipper pouch, and this should normally end up right here. Um, that's really what it's for, but luckily it fits perfectly on the top of the JSTA pouch. So you can fit a PMAG in here. Um, I don't have my pistol on me currently, but you could also fit a double stack or single stack pistol mag in here for an additional magazine but I kind of just run it as a closed pocket for like, you know, like multi-tools or uh, like shears or whatnot. Um, but right now there's nothing in there. But on the inside, on this side, it's mainly maintenance and care for my uh, equipment on this side. So I've got some CLP, I've got <clears throat> some Tetra grease, and this is kind of a last resort. If I run out of CLP, I'll end up running this. This is more for like long-term storage, not really actively, you know, shooting or using kind of grease. And I've got some thread locker blue, you know, thread locker shit, man. I don't know what to tell you. Got some multi-tools. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head what these are actually called, but there's two different versions. It's the hexagon ones and the star, the star style ones. Um, a bunch of my pieces of kit end up using either one of these, so I just run both of them, multiple sizes. And then right here, I've got bundled up in some paracord, some dedicated keys for, you know, like my primary arms optics, my pistol optics, um, some punches for my AR and shit like that. You know, just stuff in case something goes really wrong, I can fix it. And that's pretty much everything on this side in that pouch. On um, the extended pouch right here, <clears throat> I keep a carabiner and it's a, it's a rock climbing bear uh, carabiner. Um, so it's rated for like high usage, heavy loads. Um, not much to say about it. I use it mainly for camping, you know, if I need to make a makeshift shelter or something. So, yeah. I got some 36, a number 36 bank line right here. Now this stuff's pretty neat. It's basically stronger paracord. Um, I'm not gonna give you like the scientific version. It's basically really heavily rated paracord. So you can get up to like five or 600 pounds worth of tension before this breaks. It's good for like fishing, setting traps. Um, probably set a hammock and a shelter with it if you're brave enough. This is about 500 feet of it. So if I run out of paracord, this is my last resort. Um, and I mainly run this because of David Cannonberry. I love watching his stuff and uh, learning from him. He's got really good videos on like the five seas of survival and just like bush, bushcraft knowledge in general. So if you're more interested in that side of it, check him out because you'll get all the answers you need from him. All right, so that's the uh, right side of the chest rig broken down. Move over, here's the left side. You've already been over the tourniquet, my light. So this side's more of a getting started if some shit goes wrong, 
goes sideways. It's like survival, water, fire, you know, all that kind of jazz. Um, so in here, got more paracord. It's about 25 to 50 feet of more paracord. Same shit as on this side. I got batteries. Like I said, you can see in this pouch, I don't have any right now. They'd usually be out of here. Um, but I got a whole bunch of CR123As because that's what all my gears run off of at this point. Pretty much everything is compatible with these. And I got some CR2023 batteries in there as well. Um, Mylar survival blanket. This is, uh, wait, hold on. Sorry. More batteries. Drunken shenanigans. Got a Mylar survival blanket. This is kind of a last resort for me. Um, in my everyday life, I usually have layers of clothing on just because of what I do for a living. So I'm not really worried about ever, ever having to use this or being out of layers, but it is nice to have just in case. It's good for holding in your heat, it's reflective. You need to get a fire going, this is your best friend. And there, my fire starting kit. Um, this is just basic stuff really, but that's all I run. Um, so I got a roll of duct tape in here. I've got a lighter wrapped in duct tape with a ranger band as well. Um, you'll see in Flevin's kit, he runs a credit card covered in duct tape. Um, this is all I need really. And I've got this neat little can to run this in there. So I'm not worried about doing it like he does, but his idea is really solid. Um, got some, <laughs> I got some fat wax covered wool. Um, this is good for starting flames and fires. It's kind of a last resort for me usually. And you can get these wool wax sticks on like Amazon for like 10 or $15 usually. Um, pretty cheap, but really effective. You know, like I said, that's a last resort for me usually. And then I got the Pathfinder uh, mini burner. I can't remember exact exactly what this is called. Basically this hooks up to like, you know, your basic camp burner. Well, uh, iso, isopropane or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, but you hook it in, you can cook all your fires on there and shit like that. Um, that's usually what I run. And then I just got a razor blade. If I was to lose a blade or um, my multi-tool or something, I've got this as a last resort for cutting up stuff. And then from there, got some dude wipes. Hygiene matters. Goon Crew supports good hygiene. So uh, wipe your ass, wash your hands. That's all I really got to say about that. Uh, holy shit. And then in here, last little pouch. Got my water, my water purification and uh, maintenance kit basically. Sawyer Mini Filter. Um, not much to say about this. You know, it speaks for itself really. It's good for water filtration. You can hook it up to a water bottle. Um, this neat little pouch that they provide. I haven't had any problems with this, but I know some people have had problems with these using them. But so far it's been flawless for me. You hook these up to a standard water bottle, like a 12 ounce one. Um, canteens are good to use with these. You know, shit like that. And they're good for a lifetime usually. And then if I was to lose that or, you know, have multiple water storage devices, I've got some potable water tablets. Um, they're an A and B combo. Um, you know, not much to say about them. You throw them in there, and make it drinkable. So yeah, it's kind of my last resort for those. Um, that's my chest rig. Uh, where's my bag? And you're probably wondering, where's the medical kit at? Um, unlike everyone else, I run mine separately. It's probably kind of weird, but for me it makes sense. So normally I won't have this with me. I have a smaller rig. You'll probably see it in our shooting range videos that we're gonna upload here soon where I got my little triple placard and I end up running this usually with that as my like EDC kit. 
Let me get into my serious man voice. Okay, I like it. Have you ever got your dick caught in the elevator? Go ahead and subscribe button. God damn, dude. Fucking smoke. Here, move over here. I can't read. It's cue cards. All right, ready? All right, yeah. everyone shut the fuck up. Three, two, one, go. All right, hard cut. Happy New Year's, my boys. Had to do a cut, because the uh, the watch show is 12.10 now, so uh, you know, we had to go celebrate, get a little more drunk or rare. Um, last piece of kit for me, it's gonna be my dedicated IFAC. Um, I don't keep one on this chest rig specifically. Um, like I said before, I run this usually with my EDC kit, and that's my little triple placard magazine carrier. Um, I don't run this normally. This is more for in the woods if shit's going real bad. This is what I'm going to be running. So, in here, it's a full dedicated IFAC. I got everything I would need to deal with some trauma for me or the boys. Um, they also run their own IFACs. So, from the front to back. I've got some hyphen chest seals, you know, nar gauze, um, some little bullshit gauze for like finger cuts or, you know, small lacerations. I got amphetamines or, uh, you know, ibuprofen, gloves, some topicals, um, you know, just like the basic stuff that you would normally see, like insect bites and shit like that. Um, some frog tape in here. Some, what are these called? I don't even remember what these are. I don't remember. I'm too fucked up. <laughs> I'm just keeping it hot, dude. Um, but yeah, I got the full works in here, basically. I don't remember what this is called. E's gonna break this down for you. I know how to use it. I just can't. The words are just not there for me right now for what it is. No, 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 no. It's good. It's good. Don't, don't even worry about it. I got you. Hold on. <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me. Okay. So this is an electro desiccation stick, and basically we use this during surgeries. And what it does is, if, if there's like a wound like about three to four inches deep. Um, basically what you can do is turn this on and any blood vessels that are like bleeding too frequently because see people have like this massive misconception that arteries is what really kills you but people don't understand is that blood vessels can really like mess you up as well. Amen. So ba basically what this does is when you turn it on it can at least seal off those blood vessels that can like pause the time and delay that you're going to bleed for basically about like a day or two at most like three days but it can delay for like a day or two. So these are really important to have. They are pretty expensive if you try to go on to like um, Henry Shrine or something. But <coughs> but luckily I get it at my job for free because I take it from my job. But basically you can get it for free if you like work in medical. You know what I mean? So like or steal. Yeah. Just, just but basically steal. The, those basically and they take a, about I think a double A battery. You just have to take it out very carefully because there's a copper rod. That runs through the double A batteries, but as long as you replace those double A batteries, uh, it will just continuously run, and it's a really solid item of use. You just have to clean them every like time you want to use them. But that's basically it. I appreciate you. Eat. That's the most coherent he's been the entire night, by the way. So, just for reference. All right, back to the video. So. uh <laughs> in this little front pocket Get some more CR 123s just some spares. Uh, I've got a Silver sharpie just for like admin use writing tourniquets, whatever um, And then in here is more of like the everyday boo-boos like wifey gets a cut on her fingy or Or if leaving, you know cuts his wee-wee. I can patch it up for him. So we got, you know, non-woven sponges, moleskins, um, ibuprofen, alcohol wipes, you know, little band-aids, the basic shit, basically. Some tweezers. So, that's 
especially my IFAC. Um, There's not much to it. I'm entirely too drunk to keep doing this. Um, this so has to be the last take this, ever. This is the last take ever. If it's shit, it'll be shit. I'm not recording this a fourth time. So if you see this, Please fucking like this video. It's like taken it. it has taken almost two and a half weeks. I've tried to record this video three times now, so hopefully this is the last one.